Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the Dreyfus Demonar series. My name is Chris Rizal and I'm joined today by my colleague Jasper Wong. Hi everyone, we're having a wonderful day. So this is our fifth Demonar now, uh, so I'm not going to explain what they are. I'm sure uh, we've got a lot of repeat viewers. Um, but yeah, I think the important thing to note is that the, the topics that we're covering in these Demonars are based on what you, our customers, told us that you wanted to see. Uh, we've done a number of different topics, uh, and this is our first sort of two-parter. Last Demonar was around IFC and how to effectively load an IFC model into Dorofus and, and do some of the basic setup, data sync, etc. In today's Demonar, Jasper's going to walk us through some really valuable use cases of, of why you'd actually want to put an IFC file into Drofus, what would be some of the specific use cases for, for the different stakeholders involved. As you know, we try to keep them to between 15 and 20 minutes, uh, so you can join this session without it disrupting your day too much. These sessions are also recorded, so you can watch them on your journey to and from work. Uh, and please also feel free to pass the details on to your colleagues. So without further ado, I will hand over to Jasper. Thanks, Chris. So in today's session, uh, we are sh showing use cases of IFC models with Dorofus Desktop Client and Dorofus Web. So the agenda is uh, in Dorofus Web, we will demonstrate the federated model view, thematic views in web, and performing a digital review, including validation. Within the desktop client, we will uh, discuss thematic views as well and creating new properties in IFC models. We will be using these key use cases to demonstrate the software functions. They are model viewing, validation, visualizing data and syncing data with models. On every project, every stakeholder has access to the data in Dorofus. We believe it is equally important that every stakeholder is able to view the data with the model, in this case, an, I, an IFC model. Typically, at different stage of project, architects, engineers, and subcontractors are model authors, and they synchronize data between their model and Dorofus database. The suppliers may provide manufacturers content to su supplement the models. IFC models can be exported from Revit or Archicad regularly to share with all stakeholders, including the model authors. Any stakeholders who do not have access to Revit or Archicad license can use the desktop client to view one IFC model. Dorofus Web allows users to federate all IFC models on a project uh, to manage information with a geometric context. <laughs> Excuse me. The first use case we will look at now is using Dorofus Web to view the models. Model authors export their geometry and data from the native formats into IFC format files. To use these geometric models together, individual stakeholders will combine them for their own use if they have the right software. Other projects may have resources to combine these files for wider consumption. The Drofus IFC server can federate these models for the benefit of the project team. We shall use the gymnasium to demonstrate this functionality where we have the shell and core of the space in the building. We will load the gym equipment from a separate IFC file to visualize and validate quantity of FFNE. The FFNE items that are in the room are highlighted. You can upload the models into Dorofus Web. Our IFC web server can federate various discipline model files. You can upload the IFC files by browsing to the model settings tab and select the IFC files to upload. When upload is completed, you will see the files in the list of models. Browsing back to the room module and refreshing the web page, the gym equipment is loaded into the model viewer. The match column is updated with the quantity validation statuses. In the list of FFNE items, 
the quantity for all except the treadmill matches. The exclamation mark for the treadmill is indica indicates there are differences in the quantities between the model and the database. This validation check is helpful to the project in keeping that FFNE quantities are aligned between the brief and the design. With the IFC viewer, stakeholders uses, uses it to give them context to the room and equipment data they are working with. For example, an FFNE consultant can update data in Drawfer's work with the confidence that the items have been provided in the design. When the data first loads, it will show the fields that have values in them. To view all the available fields, toggle the empty field hidden icon, which allows the users to see all the attributes and input data into other fields. Majority of these fields are editable. Hovering over the fields with a cursor will reveal editable fields with a pencil icon. Click on the icon to edit. When finished, select the tick to accept the changes. The cross will cancel all changes and not save the content. The next use case is validating the information in the model and database. For Revit and Archicad users, we have a plugin where they can validate rooms and quantities of equipment. For the rest of the project team, there are many ways for Drawfus Web and IFC models that can help their workflow when it comes to reviewing the data with the model. For this demonstration, we will look at how you can use Drawfus Web to validate an IFC model. The Drawfus Web interface will be on the left with a static PDF version of the room data sheet on the right. First, Rooms that are connected with the model will have a green tick, so you know they exist in the model. Any crosses indicate there is no corresponding model rooms or they are not connected. As we scroll through the content of the Rufus web, the same information is laid out on the PDF room datasheet. For equipment and finishes, the match columns identify which elements are found in the model and if quantities are matched. This gives us a quick overview of which items have been provided in the model and be able to ask for the relevant content for your work. You can also view images of the design rooms that you may include in your room data sheet. Using these digital workflows, you will have certainty if the room and FFNE elements have been provided in the design and perhaps remove any need for reviewing static PDF reports. In Durofus, painting by data is something you can do without requiring the data to be inserted into a geometric model. We will demonstrate how you can manage the color schemes of the displayed model uh, using a functional structure. The model viewer in the desktop client can display the model with an overlay of the functional level colors, for example, department colors. The colors are specified within the department properties. Here we are differentiating between the gym, the spa, and travel and engineering spaces with different colors. You can also define your own color schemes using RGB values. If you would like a slightly transparent look of, for the model, you can increase the transparency using the alpha channel. On every project, at some point in time, 
stakeholders would have made a color markup to distill complex information or simply view it graphically, such as handover dates. In this scenario, a contractor has to hand over some retail tenancies to different fit out teams. Within Dorofus, you can set up the handover dates in a group and assign uh, these dates to the shops. This information can be viewed graphically using the IFC model in Dorofus web. Browsing to the tenancies on level zero or ground level, we change the 2D view to display the tenancy handover dates. There are different colors and a legend to distinguish what they are. There are several dates with the same colors and the settings uh, for the colors are managed in the desktop client. In the desktop client, go to the group and select the date. You can change the color to one for pre-selected colors. When each date has have its unique color, we can return to the web browser, refresh the website, and the color overlay will update to the settings defined earlier. The new color scheme is available to all users with access to Dorofus. You can also view the information in a 3D representation of the model. If you update the tenancy with a new delivery date, the information and color will change and any users of the database subsequently will be able to access and refer to the updated information for their work. Using Dorofus for thematic views, the data does not need to be synced into your models. You can set up as many groups to help you visualize your design requirements or design data. We have created a non-exhaustive list of what you can visualize with this functionality. With the functional structure data, you can uh, do blocking or stacking diagrams or viewing department versus travel engineering. There are also several use cases for group data, for example, uh, fire rating, structural slab capacity, and lighting levels, to name a few. I'm sure there are other use cases and we would like to hear if you have a use case we have not mentioned here. One of the powerful functions in the desktop client is the ability to create new property sets or P sets in IFC models. Often the final IFC model to be handed over has additional data requirements, which may be outside the scope of model authors. For example, Assigning VBIS classification may not be the job of an architect, but it may be the responsibility of the contractor to provide this classification as part of his final deliverables. It is always possible to ask the architect nicely to insert the values into their models. With our software, the contractor can insert these values into the IFC models. The next demo clip we will show you how to create uh, new VBIS values in the IFC through Dorofus. Uh, before that, uh, you might ask, what is VBIS? Uh, it stands for Virtual Buildings Information System. It is a class asset classification created in Australia from a collaboration between government and industry. The aim of VBIS is to create consistency in asset information and registers to assist with asset management activities. VBIS classifications can be imported into Dorofus and apply to various elements in your design. We will be having a webinar about VBIS and Dorofus. Follow us on LinkedIn, where we will post details of the webinar. Continuing with the demo now, let us look at this model, specifically uh, the queen bed in the room. The model currently does not have VBIS properties within it. We will be inserting VBIS codes and name after the worksite property. For the item attribute configurator, we only need to establish the key attribute to link the database to the model. Within the occurrence attribute configurator, we will set up a new configuration to write VBIS codes and names to the model. We are going to create the new property within, a, within an existing property set name called type identity data. 
For property names, we will call it VB's code and VB's name, so it will be clear for other model users. To synchronize, select the queen bed from the list. The model viewer will show all instances of the queen beds. Synchronizing the model will push the VB's codes and names to all the instances. Lastly, save the model to finalize the change. The workflow we just showed has a few use cases. For example, a quantity surveyor can update budget groupings in their version of the IFC models before receiving newer IFC versions. We can also inject asset numbers into IFC models, which we will demonstrate next. At the handover stage, one of the activities is to create unique asset numbering for various elements. We have developed an asset numbering system in Dorofus that can be synchronized to IFC model. We will explain how to create a number with VBIS codes and insert uh, the number into the model. To create the unique numbers, there are some settings required. The first is to set up ensuring that VBIS code is generating a number. Within settings, project, classification, we will set the VBIS classification for items and also set the classification to generate a number. Next is to set the occurrence numbering. And we do this in the system settings with the following. Set to number all occurrences. Select verify number of characters in serial number to check for the length of serial number where modifying occurrences. Set the number of characters in a serial number for new occurrences and new system components. And lastly, check that all serial numbers are numeric. With these settings completed, we can now look at what asset numbering looks like. Asset numbers are typically unique for individual items. We have assumed that occurrences have been split and synced with Revit or Archicad models before the IFC files are produced. Every occurrence in the database will have an asset number automatically generated. If there is no VBIS classification assigned, the number generator will consist of the item number and the serial number. If a VBIS code is assigned to the object, the classification will be used in the final number. We will go into a bit of detail how the classification number is created. The first part of the code is made up of the VBIS code and the VBIS serial number that the software generates. This will generate a unique number for each classification, which I call classification number. At the occurrence level, the system will generate a four digit serial number. The asset number is a combination of a classification number and the serial number separated by a forward slash. During the project, you may have a mixture of different asset numbering format, as you can see. At the end of a project, every element should have a classification assigned, so the asset number has a consistent format for all elements. Coming back to look at the queen beds, uh, we can see the asset numbers are unique for each occurrence. Now that the asset number has been set up and we are ready to push the values into the model. In the occurrence data attribute config, we will set up a rule to write the number to a new property. This will be grouped with the type identity data. You can group, create a new property group uh, if, you, if required. The next and final step is to sync the model and the database using the synchronize with model function. When the sync is complete, the property value will be available in the model. And lastly, save the model to uh, complete. 
In today's sessions, we have demonstrated through these use cases how you can use IFC functions in both desktop client and Drupal's web to help with some of the deliverables. We would love to hear other use cases uh, you are using on your projects. We have come to the end of this demo now, and I hope you found today's session useful. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, Jesper. That was really great. Um, so today we covered several interesting use cases, uh, but for me, one of the most powerful strings together, applying a classification, unique asset numbers, and publishing that into the IFC for handover. To dig into that a little bit deeper, you know, imagine you're the builder or the BIM digital engineering manager. The consultant team have completed their work, but some of the classifications are missing or incorrect. Likewise, you've been tasked with generating unique asset IDs, and both the classification and asset ID uh, required to be in the IFC for handover purposes. One option, of course, is to pay variations to the consultant teams or another specialist consultant to do the FM mobilization work and fill the gaps. Or you can do this quickly and easily in Drophus, as Jasper demonstrated, you know, knowing that your asset numbers are unique, they follow the correct syntax, plus you can check and validate the data. So for me, that's immensely powerful. Um, Jasper, just in case anyone joined us late or uh, wants to share this with their colleagues, how will they be able to find the recording? The recordings of this session will be posted onto the Drawfirst YouTube channel, and we are collating all the demonas uh, videos into a, a single playlist. Uh, once the video is uploaded, uh, uh, we'll be sending out an email uh, to notify uh, the attendees. Fantastic. So our next demonar in this series will be uh, to, to do with using Drawfirst Web. We haven't yet set a date for this. Um, as Jasper mentioned, we are going to be doing a webinar fairly soon together with VBIS uh, around the classification. So yeah, we've, we've got to look at the exact dates, but we'll certainly get back to you all soon with uh, with when this IFC, uh, sorry, Drophus web-based seminar will be happening. Um, and Jasper, sorry, just to remind everyone again, the date for the VBIS webinar? Uh, we haven't uh, fixed the date at this point, but uh, we will be sharing that once we have a fixed date. Oh, okay, sorry, I thought we had <laughs> my, my mistake. Anyway, it will be in the next couple of weeks. So thanks everyone for dialing in today and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks everyone. Bye for now.